Her boys here from GimmeAct.com. Here we are today back in the Forge and Fog update to Dead by Daylight going for the Adept Knight achievement. This one's going to be done from the killer side. It is to get a Merciless Killer rating as the knight using only his three unique perks. This one's going to require that you play as the update's killer in the form of the knight. You're also going to need to get him to a minimum of level 10 in order to open up three free perk slots. The perks you want to run and only run are going to be Nowhere to Hide. You're also going to want to run Face the Darkness, which is going to be a Hex perk, and then the third and final thing you want is going to be Hubris. Leave the fourth slot empty if you have that available to you, and make sure you do whatever you want for add-ons or offerings. Make sure you get into the game. The Knight is going to be a pretty decent character in terms of his normal abilities and attacks, so nothing to worry about with that. In terms of his special attack, it's going to have a bit of a learning curve to it, but if you can get it down, it can be pretty useful as a very good pressure tool. The way it's going to work is basically you want to be standing still, you're going to hold left trigger to summon a guard, you're basically going to switch views and you're going to basically draw a line. Wherever you end this line is going to spawn a guard and the line that you draw is basically going to be the guard's patrol path. As the guard is patrolling this path, it's going to emit a radius. Whatever survivor steps into this radius is basically going to trigger the guard to chase them. Now, normally using this ability is going to be a bit slow and clunky, as you are going to have to come to complete stop in order to use it, and it's going to be very difficult to use while in the middle of a chase. So the best tactic to employ when using the ability is going to be in these situations. Normally, whenever you chase a survivor, they're usually going to try to get you into a loop. What you can do is you can pop the guard up during the middle of this loop, and basically that will get them chasing the survivor one way. Then what you want to do is you want to make sure you loop the other way, then basically you and the guard are going to scissor the survivor, and that way you can pressure them into a spot where you can get an easy swing on them. Another good use of the guards is going to be in a defensive measure. What you can do is whenever you pop someone up on a hook, what you can do is you can set up a guard patrol path to watch the area. That way if someone comes in for the rescue really quickly, you can get a fix on their location as Whoever steps within the guard's radius is going to get pinged and is going to trigger the guard to chase them right away. That way you should get a fix on any rescuer locations if they do manage to come in while the guard is still up. Do keep in mind you can only have one guard on the map at a time and the guards are going to have a time limit on their patrols. So make sure you mind those two things. It is always going to be more advantageous to have a guard at the ready in case a survivor does loop you rather than wasting it trying to watch someone who's currently on a hook. That being said, the knight's first two perks are going to be great for sniffing out survivors. The first one is going to be super useful. Whenever you kick a generator, you should read the aura of any nearby survivors. So make sure you stay up on your generator pressure, and that way you can also use it to sniff out the survivor who abandons it. And then just make sure you bait them in to a loop spot, make sure you use the knight's power accordingly, and then you should be able to punish. The second one is basically going to be a hex perk. While your hex totem is up, survivors outside of your terror radius should should scream every now and again, which is going to reveal their location. So thanks to these two perks, especially early on while your hex is still up, you should be able to get a pretty good read of the map. As for the knight's third perk, this one's going to be super useful whenever the survivors do drop a pallet on you. Any survivor who stuns you with a pallet is going to have the exposed status put on them right away. So if you are dealing with a fully healthy survivor, if they drop a pallet on you, you should be able to one-shot them while they still have that exposed status, so you should be able to punish accordingly. So if you are getting looped by a fully healthy survivor, make sure you take the pallet stun and that way they're going to get the status condition on them so you should be able to take them down way easier. And then just make sure you keep up on this pressure game. Remember to always go for generator kicks whenever you can. It's always going to be super helpful trying to get a read on the immediate vicinity of the area. And then hopefully your hex totem stays up so you can get a read on those further away survivors. And you should be able to move in and out between survivor engagements a lot better. So just make sure you just keep that up. And then whenever you do get into a chase, make sure you keep the pressure game up and then try to go for these loops where you can take advantage of your guards. If you are playing on a map that has a ton of barriers, I recommend you clear them out whenever you have a moment. The more areas that you can funnel survivors through using your guards, the better. So you can put them in more sticky situations where your scissor strategy is going to come in handy, especially if they are going to be running low on loops. So as the game is going to go further on and they're going to be running out of spots to loop you using pallets, you can take advantage of these areas as well. So just make sure you put up those guards that should pressure them away from wherever they're trying 
trying to loop you, and then hopefully you can try to cut them off. And even if you don't reach them, the guards can still do damage to them, which is going to be a nice bonus. So just make sure you try to get them in these awkward spots, and then just make sure you punish as best as you can. This is going to require a pretty good skill in Dead by Daylight movement, so just make sure you keep up on your fundamentals in conjunction with the ability, and you should be able to get them in these awkward spots. So just make sure you keep the pressure game strong and then just keep trying to cut them off the best you can. Even though the guards are going to be a useful pressure tool, it's always going to be safe to remember that you are going to need to come to a complete stop in order to pop one up. So if you are in the middle of the chase, make sure you don't lose too much distance or just make sure you save them for the beginnings of chases rather than using them in the middle and you should be able to get the most out of them. So just keep this up as well as your good old basic Dead by Daylight fundamentals and you should be able to do well hopefully in all four of the major killer statistics. So just make sure you keep up with that and hopefully you can manage that plus two at the end of the game do all the stuff that you normally would make sure you're spreading all of your hits downs and hooks across all four survivors as evenly as you can and make sure you try to get as many on everyone as best you can once you do finally manage to score that game where you do well in all four of the major killer statistic categories, you should be good for the merciless killer rating as well as the achievement. Of course, you can check however well you did on whatever categories by hitting right bumper on the result screen and seeing what you need to improve on. So just make sure you take note of that. And then once you do manage that plus two, you should be good for the achievement. 20 gamer score. And that's all there is to it.